So in our experiments, we created a form of long-term memory in the snail, and then we managed to erase it. Welcome to UCLA Newsweek. In this edition, erasing long-term memory, His Holiness the Dalai Lama on campus, a visionary approach to medicine, and a 3D microscope in a cell phone. David Glansman sat down in Studio 210B to discuss his group's gripping new findings on erasing long-term memory in the marine snail Aplesia, giving scientists important insights into long-term memory in humans. Scientists like myself are reductionists. In other words, what we want to do is take an incredibly complicated problem, like, you know, how I remembered what happened to me in the fifth grade, and reduce it to its simplest components. So what that means is we don't want to work on people because their brains are way too complicated. We don't want to work on the me my memory of what happened to me in the fifth grade because that's too complicated. What we want to do is take a simple animal and a, we want to look at a simple memory in that simple animal and try to understand that. An aplesia is a marine snail. And as its name suggests, it's a snail that lives in the ocean. The ones we work on live here in Southern California. I think of them as kind of molluscan cattle. They basically graze on seaweed, and that's what they spend most of their lives doing. And they're very effective at doing that. They grow from about this size to about this size in a year. So the type of memory that we looked at is one of the simplest of all memories. It's called sensitization. So this sensitization would be, for example, you were in a place where somebody shot off a gun. You would instantly become aroused. Your senses would be heightened. That's sensitization. And we induced that state or that, that type of learning in the snail by giving it um, a series of electrical shocks to its tail. And what we showed is we could take an animal a week after the training inject the inhibitor into the animal, and then when we tested the animal's reflex, they were as though the animal had never been shocked. They reset to the way they were before it was shocked. Buddhist studies professor Robert Buswell elaborates on the Semmel Institute's afternoon panel with His Holiness on meditation's effect on the brain and the star-studded fundraising efforts surrounding the 14th Dalai Lama endowment in Tibetan and Buddhist studies at UCLA. Working with the Simo fac um, faculty, we've been able to put together a very interesting program, I think, that will explore the ways in which, uh, for example, meditation helps to bring about qualitative and quantitative changes in, in, the, in, in the brain itself. Well, in, in conjunction with the event, uh, we put together a host committee of people in the community who are, who are going to be uh, hosting the Dalai Lama during this visit. Part of what this entails is we're, um, we're, we're actually raising money for a special endowment that His Holiness uh, very generously lended, lent his name to. This is now called the 14th Dalai Lama Endowment in Tibetan and Buddhist Studies. Our host committee has been, um, has been working very hard to raise money for that endowment in conjunction with His Holiness's visit to UCLA. And uh, we have on, on the host committee a number of very well-known Hollywood celebrities and local celebrities, uh, such people as Anthony Hopkins, and Harrison Ford, Sharon Stone, Diane Ladd. Uh, you go down the list of people, it's a very interesting group. So we're going to have a, uh, a private breakfast uh, for the host committee on the day of the event to which His Holiness will also come and say a few words as well. And then they will be here with, uh, with us for the day um, to hear the Dalai Lama's uh, talks and to hear the symposium in the afternoon also. So again, a very different kind of crowd than we normally get at our, at our Buddhist studies events here at UCLA. <laughs> And now a look at more developments out of Westwood. Dr. Eugene Washington, Dean of the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA, stopped by the studio to shed light on his team's strategic vision for the future of medicine that focuses on multidisciplinary teams and collaborations and the rapid transition from research into practice. This plan is, is about our attempt to shape the future of medicine, but not just medicine, shape the future of science, shape the future of education, and then ultimately shape the future of health. Shaping the future requires vivid imagination and um, gifted people. Uh, fortunately, UCLA Health Sciences is richly endowed with both. Um, uh, with the inexhaustible imagination of our extraordinary people, uh, I am extremely confident that we will, in fact, shape the future here, now, 
UCLA uh, to the benefit of populations worldwide. And Aidan Ojem is on mic, shedding light on his 3D cell phone microscope. I wanted to put together new devices that uh, are connected through telecommunication links, like cell phone being a perfect uh, one because it's highly sophisticated. It's hardware and software that you have on, in your pocket is phenomenally complex, but at the same time, because of the volumes, because of billions of cell phones that we have, we have more than um, 4 billion cell phone subscribers today, and every year we manufacture on the order of a billion new cell phones. So that means uh, because of that volume, we have in our pockets access to a very sophisticated hardware and software together. So that could really be leveraged to bring new microscopes that does not exist uh, today um, to even remote locations. That's really the, the motivation uh, how I started working on this uh, telemedicine microscopy. Ozjan's research team at the California Nanosystems Institute has shown that lens-free optical tomography on a chip can capture high-resolution 3D images of microscopic objects. To learn much more about these studies and other cutting-edge research, visit UCLA Newsroom at newsroom.ucla.edu and follow us on Twitter at UCLA Broadcast.